Foot Clan, we got a great show for you today. Tons of matchups to get into. It's the playoff semifinal week for many of you. Before we do that, I want to remind you, fantasychamps.com. If you need some of that sweet hardware to celebrate your victory, look no further, fantasychamps.com, and they do this every year for us. If you use the code free ring at fantasychamps.com. One word. Try to figure out what you end up getting. I th Well, it's not going to be one of the championship rings because those things are like 60 bucks. Yeah, $59. It's a free ring. If you buy a trophy, you buy a belt, you get a free ring. Wow. And you get this. The code is free ring at fantasychamps.com. To the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, Uncle Man. Guess what? <laughs> it's football time. Yeah. For reals this time. Welcome into the show Thursday, December 17th. We're back in the building. It is football time. Oh, man. Who knows what... It's playoff time. ...what Chargers wide receivers will have tonight, but it is playoff time. Oh. I, fellas, I'm, <laughs> I have engaged tilt. <laughs> I, Warp speed. I expected, yeah, you're, you're dealing with the Keenan Allen question marks tonight. Uh, he is a game-time decision, as is Mike Williams. In a great matchup uh, against the Raiders, who fired their D coordinator and are depleted on defense. They are down four starters tonight. Right. And those starters, let's be honest, questionable to be starters anyway. But they were no. the starters. No, no. Is, is Abram one of them? Yes, yeah. he yeah, is. So, so. That one, that's a huge one. That's yeah, a big deal. I mean, we, we covered that show yesterday, but then the, the news came out. We talked about, like, because of the short week, you're not entirely sure if the injuries are just rest days or if they're actually injured. Now it's getting scarier. And the whole question, I think the most questionable player in that entire matchup is Justin Herbert. What do you do in such a great matchup with a bad defense, down four starters, when, I, like, what if Keenan doesn't go or Mike Williams or both? If they both don't go, like I that, would I would try to play somebody else. I would. I like mean, Hurts. Sure. Yeah. 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 I mean, you you have to stay water even in the playoffs, and if you take away, okay, let's say, I mean, we have Rulio eleven, right? And that's Matt Ryan and his number one option. You you've got a rookie. He's been, you know, you got rookie Wall. You've got you've got the the Patriot game example, and then you take away. Your top two receiving options, and it, it becomes a little questionable. I think it is about Keenan. Uh, yes. I don't real Mike Williams is good, but there are other options there that I think Herbert will be fine without. So it's a matter of if Keenan is not available, look to pivot. Would if, you Would you go all the way down to, uh, let's see, Philip Rivers against Houston? Yeah, I think so. I think okay. he's just because at this safer. point, if you had Herbert, most likely you're just like, oh, I'm playing Herbert. I'm not gonna go to the waiver wire yet the so. last three games for Dustin Herbert just to make sure people understand it wasn't just the New England game he was the 14th quarterback against Buffalo that's not terrible 30th against that's well not terrible but not what you want this week sure and then 17th against Atlanta last week with with Keenan Allen for the majority of the game so you are in it's ironic because we call those finishes Philip Rivers 14 right. 17 that's yeah. like where he lives yeah so but the ceiling is going to come down Without Keenan Allen, he's too good. Otherwise, we're we're doing a disservice to Keenan Allen, saying that Herbert will be right. just fine. Yeah. Uh, so that's going on tonight. I thought I would be rooting against you, Mike, um, wanting you to experience pain the way that you brought it to me to yes. my doorstep. Yes, delivered express. I I'm just kind of I'm kind of neutral. If you lose, great. Mm. If you win, great. Okay, that's fine. All I, right. And you should be pleased with this place that I'm in. <laughs> Who knows? By the by Sunday I might be rooting for you. So I've I've never felt so supported by you. <laughs> so so loved. It's really good. Don't cry, Mike. <laughs> yeah. YouTube.com slash the fantasy footballer. Subscribe, click the bell if you want to watch the show. Uh we are a year round podcast. So when the season ends, we're still gonna be talking fantasy football uh through the NFL playoffs and, and the off season and before you know it, you, you know how this works. Yep. 
It, it basically, you know, how the NBA season right now feels like. Wait, what? Huh? Mm -hmm. It's it's starting next week. Um, and Brooks wants to remind everyone: number one, still outrageously wealthy. Right. Number two, the show's coming up in the off season. We got the the Footy Awards. If there there is a none more higher esteemed award. <laughs> Perfectly said, Mike. Yep. <laughs> okay. Okay. The none more higher esteemed award. Yes. That's in right. the land. In in the land. I'm not just talking about fantasy football. Jason no. Moore Oscars. just made fun of the way you said something. Oscars, get out of here with that garbage. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Oscar Schmosker. The 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 footies are for real. We've got the truth series, yes. the truth about running backs, wide receivers, tight ends. We look back at not just where they ranked, but how they did. Obviously, we're going to be looking at rookies, There's, and and we're just talking football. We're all best friends. Let's talk football <laughs> through the offseason. All right, let's do it, and uh, let's take it to 100. Taking it up to 100. Presented by Head & Shoulders. Available at Walmart. My name is Jeff. <laughs> All right, so... Uh, Let's let Jason go. Week 14 in the books, and I believe Mike is still ahead by one week. Yes, he is one game up on you, Andy. So I'm only up one? That is right. Oh, crap, this I thought week, it was two. This week will really matter to see which one of you will hoist the uh, 100 trophy uh, and take it up to 100. The 100 pound trophy. I will. Yes, it, it better be 100 yeah. pounds. Um, I, I'll kick it off here since I'm out of the running for uh, the victory. But my name is Jeff. Jeff Wilson Jr. Is, you were first to the, the show, Doc. Yeah. So you got Jeff Wilson. <laughs> exactly. Um, Jeff Wilson is a smash play. Even if Mostert, uh, you know, is is active he's not a hundred percent when he was a hundred percent it was a 50 50 split with Jeff Wilson against Dallas it's a smash smash yes. matchup and Jeff Wilson will most definitely take it to 100 this week all right uh yeah la last week Mike and I both hit so we're still I'm still just one back uh I'm actually gonna go with Chris Godwin this week all right this has not been the year you hope for from Chris Godwin or anything close to it no one week in the top 12. Oof. for Chris Godwin. This is uh, the best matchup this week that you can imagine against Atlanta slot cornerback Isaiah Oliver. It's a huge advantage for Godwin in that one. I think you're seeing 10 targets in this game. I think he's going to take it to 100 yards and for your fantasy team. You so. also have him a week removed from getting the pin out of his hand. That has to help. Yep. Yep. You remember me? Not for writing. On though. this podcast for that week after I got a pin out of my hand? How bad I was. You couldn't even talk. I could barely speak. <laughs> All right. And I'm going with a uh, a player who I believe this particular week will take it up to an extra 100. I'm going with Juju Smith-Schuster. The Pittsburgh Steelers offense has been uh, lackadaisical. They, uh, That's very kind, Mike. Yes. I'm, I'm trying to be kind with my words here. But last time that they stink. The, the the last time the Steelers played, they have they've stunk really really bad lately. Last but the last time they played the Bengals, Big Ben dropped over three hundred and four touchdowns, and that was actually Juju's best game of the year. And I expect a bit of a replication here that I am playing Juju with confidence this week. Juju Cincinnati. <laughs> yeah, we'll just call all players who have a good game against a certain <laughs> team. All right. Take your hair up to 100 with Head & Shoulders available at Walmart. Pick yours up today and check out next Tuesday's episode to hear how these picks went. I had a big lead for a lot of this season. Mike and then Mike's been fire. on fire. Three, uh, four out of the last five weeks. In fact, his only, your only whiff, Mike, is you chose the Miami defense. <sighs> and that was – they. Really should have taken it up to 100. Yeah, it is ironic because they've had so many great games right around where you took them. Yeah. But there's not that one. Yeah. Yeah. Into the news. News and notes from around the league. Well, what do you know? The 49ers designated tight end George Kittle to return from injured reserve. And there was video of him running around in practice yesterday. Well, that's good. You're going to need to run during the game without question. So it's his 21-day window. It uh, doesn't mean he's going to be active this week or next week, but it means he can be. Yeah. Um, and I, I've said this before when we've had questions of do I drop Kittle? Obviously, we're at the end of the season here. But if he comes back, 
He's in my lineup. Yes. The first week back, I will plug him in. Obviously, if you have Kelsey or Waller, okay, maybe not. But outside of those two guys, you're going to play Kittle, and he can help you win a championship, even if you only get him for that single championship game. Does it? I, I hadn't thought about this till just now. We've been talking up Brandon Ayuk and his 16 targets and the absence of Debo. Ayuk's a great play. Does it change his ceiling at all with Kittle, another target available? A little bit. Okay. A, a little bit, but not anything where I'm like abandoning Brandon Ayuk as a great play. Right. Nothing that would define play, how yes, you'd play him. Exactly. Raheem Mostert didn't practice on Wednesday, speaking to the Jeff Wilson point earlier. Mm -hmm. Uh, Nick Mullins more likely to start in week 15 than uh, C.J. Beathard, I guess. Kyle Shanahan coming out saying that. Drew Brees, a ways to go in his recovery. That is that because he broke like every single one of his ribs? I think that's why. I think it was all the ribs. He, I believe he's up to 82 ribs broken, uh, punctured lung, lacerated spleen. It's insane. Uh, he, he no longer has a liver. Is it um, that, was, that was shocking when they found that out. Does this mean that Taysom Hill could be a playoff quarterback? Yeah, yeah. I mean, he, he right now. I don't mean saying, fantasy playoffs. I mean right. NFL playoffs. Oh, yeah, he could possibly. I, I think they can win. Uh, obviously, they can win with Taysom Hill, and in the first round, I think they could get by with that. All right, uh, Julio Jones is considered week to week right now. I wouldn't expect him out there this week, but we'll keep monitoring that. Robert Woods sidelined on Wednesday's practice. I read the comments from uh, head coach Sean McVay. He says he's just trying to be smart with Robert Woods and that he expects him to be out there and not going to affect his uh, activity in the game. And then DJ Moore. Oh, my. He's going to play, Mike. I had not seen that news yet. Matt Rule says he will play on Saturday against the Packers. So knowing you have a Keenan Allen situation on your team right yeah, now, there could be a pivot for your team. That's interesting. I mean, that's not necessarily the <laughs> – the uh the, the the panic button you want to hit a player coming off of an ankle injury coming off of covid how much will he actually play that that remains to be seen so the, even though you're like oh you could be excited that dj moore is back ah uh, that's that's very risky business hollywood brown ronald jones both placed on the covid reserve list there were actually three players on the ravens that were placed on the list including miles boykin do we have any more updates as to their expected availability for Sunday? We do not know yet if they tested positive or, or if they were simply a close contact. If they were a uh, close contact, Hollywood could still make it back in time. Ronald Jones, though, with this, the hand injury, I would expect he will not play. Yeah, we thought he was going to miss a week already. This, I think, just brings clarity to that situation. Matt Breed is off the COVID list. Salvin uh, Ahmed off the uh, or was limited at practice. You know Miles Gaskins on the COVID list. You know that DeAndre Washington's there. It's a mess. It's probably a mess to avoid. Uh, it, yeah, I mean it's. If Ahmed is the starter, are you? Man, I don't know. It, I'll say if if Ahmed is out, I'm still going to play uh, DeAndre Washington with a with volume confidence, and it's not like the the Patriots have been the best against running backs, so. Uh, if Ahmed's out, then you have some clarity. If he is back, then I'm not going to play anybody. All right. Lamar Miller was claimed off of the Bears practice squad by the Washington football team, confirming Antonio Gibson. Good night, my champion. Not going to be seeing him. Julian Edelman back at practice for the Patriots. Do we care? No. No, I don't think so. I can't imagine that you I mean, can I, I'm happy for Julian. Is there Absolutely. any chance he could throw for more yards than Cam himself? Yes. Is he going to throw for more than 50? Mm, probably not. Okay, then probably not. All right, and uh, we'll keep you up to date. You know, our social media will be will be keeping you up to date with Keenan Allen, Mike Williams. I will throw out Tyron Johnson as a name to monitor. If both Keenan Allen and Mike Williams are out, Tyron Johnson, uh, wide receiver for the Chargers, had a big game last week and would be frequently targeted, I, I would expect, tonight. Yeah, last week uh, he had seven targets. He was six for... And he did score. All right. Uh, let's jump into the fantasy forecast. Fantasy forecast. Now, we have Saturday football this this week. Oh. Right? Yes. I believe so. Yeah, we do. We two, two of two. them. Um, 
So let's start there. The Buffalo Bills at 10-3 and three, taking on the 5-8 and eight Denver Broncos. Bills are six-point road favorites. It's a 50-point over-under. And look, I'll, I'll be honest. I was really, really impressed with Josh Allen last week. Mm, he, he was excellent. He was excellent. You scared me so bad there, Andy. I thought you were going to say I was really <laughs> thinking about making this my almost upset of the week, and I just I didn't I didn't see how that I didn't see that playing out personally. How dare you? I I know you 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 believe in Josh Allen. I believe in Josh Allen. I I am sorry that I thought you were if going you that thought, direction. If you thought I was going that direction, do you do you know what you were telling me to believe? Uh, that Drew Locke can somehow That's beat right. the ten and three That's Buffalo right. Bills. Look, am, am I an irresponsible guy? No. Okay. Then I don't align myself with with irresponsible men. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Josh Allen, you're playing him this week. Now, Mike, I was talking to Jason on the drive in today about uh, Josh Allen, Tom Brady. Do you just go with the stallion at this point? Oh, man. I know our rankings have Josh Allen consensus-wise just ahead, but it's close. And uh, if you're looking for upside, I feel like you find it with Allen and not with Brady. Uh, yeah. At, at this point, I would be playing Josh Allen ahead of Tom Brady. What do you do with the running backs in this in, in this whole game? Melvin Gordon, Philip Lindsay, Zach Moss, Devin Singletary. Well, you're not going to play Zach Moss or Devin Singletary. Though they've pretty much been absolutely irrelevant the entire season. Melvin Gordon has he's he's a player that you can you can throw in your lineup if you've gotten to the playoffs with him. You probably have a solid team around him. In, in fact. If you look, three of his last four games have been top 24 performances. He's he's a solid, if yet uninspiring, running back. Uh, the matchup against Buffalo is not that bad, so I, I'm willing to play Melvin Gordon. I don't think I roll with any of the other running backs in these games, in this game. Uh, I, I was... I thought that there was supposed to be some sort of court situation. It got postponed okay. for Melvin Gordon. Yeah, it, got, it got pushed into January, so he will complete the season, but next year, expect <coughs> Melvin Gordon to be starting with a two or three game suspension i can't remember the uh is that the mandate if you're going to start a wide receiver for the broncos it's going to be tim patrick correct mm -hmm. um he's been a top 36 wide receiver in eight of his last nine games if you don't count the game that a wide receiver from the practice squad play quarterback stefan diggs you play him john brown's going to be out According okay. to Sean McDermott, this is big news for your Cole Beasley confidence levels. Yes, it, it didn't work out last week, uh, as in the, the actual production, but you have to look a little bit deeper than that. Cole Beasley had 10 targets, and he only caught five of them, which is bizarre. That, that's a very bizarre catch percentage for Cole Beasley, considering, you know, Two weeks ago against San Francisco, he caught nine of his 11 targets. And considering every week of his career, yes. he catches everything. I mean, look, the vaccine's not stopping the Beasles. That's for sure. <laughs> uh, I, I think the Beasles is in uh, my yeah. lineup if I'm in a PPR the league. The efficacy is 0%. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Not against the Beasles. So, yeah, Cole Beasley's, uh, I think, in. It, here's, here's a real good question. Would you rather start full PPR league? Are you more confident in starting Cole Beasley or Tim Patrick on the other side? Cole Beasley. I agree. The higher floor. Yeah. Yeah. Because the Tim Patrick start, you still, you know, got an irresponsible quarterback <laughs> throwing him the ball. Noah Fant, I think you need to just uh, avoid that ride yeah. this week. And yeah, I would, I'd be looking at the, the streamers, Cole Komet from the Bears. I'd be looking at uh, Irv Smith because, I mean, it, it, it's trending that, that Kyle Rudolph is not going to play again. So I'd be playing Irv Smith over Noah Fan. I also have one as my start of the week later on the show today that uh, maybe will be a little unexpected for listeners. Oh. So an option at tight end. Thank you. What's that? This is Jordan Akins. <laughs> <laughs> Akins is not a bad play again. I can't quit him. <laughs> I thought about it, but I just couldn't. I couldn't do uh, it. Yeah, I couldn't do it. But you hard. can. You can. I would play, uh, I would play Akins o over Noah Fan. See, here's the thing with Noah Fan. I know he goosed last week, but he went into the locker room with an illness and left. He didn't play last week. He wasn't on the field uh, right off the bat. So it's not. Uh, I I I don't I don't view Noah Fant as negatively as you sure. guys. I would I would probably play the streaming matchup of Big Irv. I don't know that I would go all the way down to Cole Komet personally. And I have no idea who your start of the week is. But we can talk about that later. Yeah, this is like you know a tease. Mm -hmm. 
I'm super excited. Even though, like on a podcast, they could, you know, technically skip ahead and they would never. The Foot Clan is uh, is an honorable. <laughs> Wait, yeah. is that, that's a dishonorable thing. You must listen, except for the people listening to us at two times speed right now, which apparently, really? like, really, like my my friends listen to that now, and I'm like, why, why you gotta do that to me? Why you gotta do me dirty? Your friends listen at two times. Yeah, we hmm. sound way smarter on two times because. Of how fast we can talk. Although, if you put us on half, time, we probably sound like a. We episode sound like of the, we've had some beverages. Yes, or we sound like an episode of the Gilmore Girls. Oh yeah, because they're so quick witted yes. and smart in their their high re- school their days. Re- retorts <laughs> are unmatched. I, all right, Carolina four and nine, Green Bay ten and three. Games in Green Bay. Packers are eight point favorites. It's a fifty one and a half point over under. It's gonna be cold. <laughs> I'm just saying. I want that to be all you offer it's, to that's, this that's discussion. It. What was the other one? You, oh, good news. The the weather in Cincinnati is, that's is, right. is okay. <laughs> yes. Uh, it is going to be 30 degrees, very chilly. This is an Aaron Rodgers game. Yeah. Aaron Rodgers, Aaron Jones. I think the, the – I will bring up Aaron Jones for a second because obviously you're playing him. But I did notice that in our rankings, you know, um, he's sitting right around that RB1 spot. But, you know, you look at what Derrick Henry does at this time of year. You look at what Aaron Jones has done in, in the fact that he does seed some drives to Jamal Williams. Are you going to get the kind of explosive week-winning performance from Aaron Jones this week against Carolina? I believe you do. Uh, I, I think that uh, we know the floor is there. He's been solid the entire year. Um, the matchup is says that it's great for him, but I, I don't know that that really matters for Aaron Jones because sometimes the, the easier matchups, they could they could benefit uh, Jamal Williams, and sometimes the, the difficult matchup is where you need to rely on Aaron Jones. But in, in this case, I think that Aaron Jones' utilization will break off a long run, uh, and he'll get in the end zone. I, I think you'll be very happy with Aaron Jones this week. This game is wild for the Packers' side because – I am open to playing basically every person on this team. Like Rodgers is in, locked, Jones locked, and Adams. Robert Tunyon is 100% in. Is 100% in. On honestly, if you're in a deeper league, if you like in the uh our our listener league in the playoffs, I'm in a situation where Julio Jones keeps trending to be out. My other options in this double flex are not inspiring. I'm willing to throw in Marquez Valdez Scantling at this point. He has a he he does have a, a he can give you zero points. That's in the range of outcomes. But we've also seen you know three big games in the last six weeks for Marquez. No, thank you. Pass. That that's fine, man. It's, I know how hard you it guys is. can live in your. I don't. I only play six players leagues over here. I'm just saying it's hard to catch in the cold. And it's hard for him to catch when it's perfectly. So if it's hard for if if it's a situation where it's Kiki, hard to catch, the Kiki, reverse psychology yeah. of Kiki MBS. QT, Marquez Valdez Scantling. Yeah, if I had that decision, I would play Kiki, DJ Chark, or Marquez Valdez Scantling. Ooh, that's Ooh, great. That one. is a very. Good I would question. go DJ Chark. Mm. Man, what's the matchup for Jacksonville? I can't remember that one. Off the Baltimore. Top of I'd play MVS. Russell Gage oh. against Tampa Bay. He's got a very he's the he's he is like and I he is a clone of Marquez where like he, you would there's these spots all the time where you think Russell Gage is he's going to come through. He's a starter now for Matt Ryan and I what does Russell Gage have like two good games over the course of the whole season? I play MVS over Russell Gage. One last one, Tyron Johnson if uh Williams and If everybody is out, I would play Tyron Johnson. Okay. Okay. Uh Teddy Bridgewater <laughs> In company in this game. DJ Moore coming in. Uh, interesting. Robbie Anderson, you know, he'll be frequently targeted. Uh, I will be talking about these wide receivers later in the show, believe it or not. The matchup for Robbie Anderson, it's going to be Jair Alexander. And spoiler alert, Jair Alexander is really, really good. He's the number two ranked cornerback on Pro Football Focus this year. Mm. He is a shutdown guy, and he is he's going to be on Robbie for a majority of this game. DJ Moore, the health, hard to say. The matchup's really good for Curtis Samuel. So I like Curtis Samuel a lot in this game. And I think he's somebody, like, I would smash Curtis Samuel over MVS. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with that. I have a uh, question, though, specifically for Jason. 
Would you play Mike Davis or Raheem Mostert this week? Oh, wow. Too soon, Mike. <laughs> that one was too soon. I feel like I spread them and you kicked me right where it counts. Um, I'll go Mike Davis. Uh, good call. For 500. <laughs> Every, everyone that keeps asking whether they would start Mike Davis this week, I just tell them I think Jason would probably sit him. <laughs> You know what's what's super sad is my rankings and my advice all said play Mike Davis over Raheem Mostert. Um, I just didn't follow my Look, own some, advice. Sometimes we are our own worst enemies. Yes. I hate myself. <laughs> <laughs> Mike Davis, you got to play him this week. You do. I think that wraps that matchup up. Yep. All right. Before we get to the next matchup, want to thank Chrysler Pacifica. The, look, I, I, the Pacifica is a wonderful, wonderful minivan. If you are not in the minivan life, let me tell you, it is fantastic. If you want to haul people around, it, it doesn't all have to be kids. It could be grownups. You can be playing on their 10 inch dual touch screens in the in the back row playing some Sudoku. I used to be a Sudoku Oh, man, master. I love Sudoku. Uh, Tic-tac-toe, the license plate game. It, it, there's entertainment to be had everywhere, and you can even get like a sportier look with a blacked-out exterior and, and you know, blacked-out 20-inch wheels. Uh, look, I'm That's telling hot. you, I, I love I love my minivan. I love it. Uh, it's it's the most practical car that exists, and it's a they have a hybrid minivan. You can go 32 miles all electric, so you can basically never hit a gas station again, or if you're going on a longer trip, 520 miles in total. You can't go wrong. Right now, tax season's right around the corner, so you want to take advantage of the $7,500 federal tax credit before the end of the year with the purchase of a new Chrysler Pacifica hybrid. On top of the credit, the Foot Clan get an exclusive $1,000 bonus cash offer by visiting PacificaFootballers.com. Uh, and also, you can receive the employee price, Pacifica Family Pricing, so it's a savings of $9,000 plus up to the $7,500 federal tax credit. It's an awesome time. Go to PacificaFootballers.com if you are thinking. Go now. Ladies and gentlemen, Rockstar Games presents the biggest and most action pack update to Grand Theft Auto Online yet, the Cayo Perico Heist. You're going to be trying to infiltrate, infiltrate El Rubio's heavily secured private island home of Cayo Perico. And look at this, guys. You're trying to escape with all the jewels, oh, all the no. art, oh, no. all the cash. What? I mean... Is are, it, we, are we sure you saying that name right? Yeah, El Rubio or El Brooks? Yeah, yeah, I think that's his. I think that's his moniker, Brooks. That's Brooks. <laughs> and all Brooks his. I'll is, bet there's. I'll bet wait, there's, what's the name? Brooks is El Rubio. All yeah. righty, I'm gonna make a note there. <laughs> uh, from from lush jungle reconnaissance to dance parties on golden beaches, the Cayo Perico heist is an all new Grand Theft Auto online adventure for one to four players as you plan, prepare, and execute a daring island heist featuring an array of exciting new vehicles, weapons. They also introduced the Music Locker, a new underground dance club and social space uh, featuring world-class DJs, plus new radio stations. I mean, come on. There's a ton in, in the online games. Get into it. Access to Grand Theft Auto Online and the Cayo Perico heist is free with every copy of Grand Theft Auto 5. Play now on PlayStation 4 and via backward compatibility on PlayStation 5. Rated M for Mature. All right. Tampa Bay, Atlanta. Are we cool to move forward? El Rubio with this matchup? <laughs> yeah, let's do it. All right. Tampa Bay. Eight. Well, you don't want to cross El Rubio. No. no. Oh, my gosh. He he has. You ever crossed a drug lord? He has quite a few gunmen that are <laughs> under his employ. Well, the, the problem is, is I know you use the Simply Safe, so I need to sneak onto your compound, but I know it's going to be an issue. Yeah. yeah heavily good, armed. Good luck with that. Yeah. <laughs> Tampa Bay, 8-5, and five, Atlanta, 4-9. and nine. Buccaneers are six and a half point favorites, 50 and a half point over under. Um, I will say this. I am tired of trying to figure out when Tom Brady is going to have a monster game. I don't think I know when it will happen. Tom Brady, you know, coming out of the bye, thought you'd figure it out. I thought he'd have a huge game against the Rams, uh, get things figured out. You know, he wanted to go play golf with Bruce you Arians to get things figured out. He would have a good game against the best defense in football in this the Rams. This was weeks ago. I did. I okay. did. All I right. thought I, I 
there there is the narrative of you know Tom Brady figures it out, and you don't know necessarily when it's going to be. And he comes out and he gives you fantasy weeks where he's been the number one overall fantasy quarterback. Um, number two against the Chargers, uh, number one against Carolina, top five against Kansas City two weeks ago. That's what I'm saying. But then he drops down to 20 against Minnesota. I will. It say, seems like he should be great this week. I, I I think he will be great this week, and we're going to talk about him in a little bit. To your credit, though, I will say this: uh, Tom Brady looked good this this last. He had a he had one absolutely hysterically awful throw. Um, it was it was amazing. It was unbelievable. <laughs> he, he overthrew his running back by a good ten yards. But outside of that, he played very well, and then he wasn't needed. I do, oh man. I wish that Julio was there because that is the one downside: is that if the Atlanta Falcons can't do anything against this Tampa Bay Buccaneers defense, then yeah, I, I think the that that top five game is is you know going to be out of reach for him uh, because he won't be necessary. But you look at the matchup and you say, okay, you don't have Ronald Jones. You you don't. Well, you don't. Do we know that definitively? No, we don't know that yet. At best, you have a broken finger. Ronald Jones against a very good run defense. They've been top six all year, um, and you've got all your weapons finally healthy and active and together. So I expect big things from Brady, but I understand. I mean, we've got Brady and Josh Allen. We've been talking about who do you start there, and and all three of us have gone to the Josh Allen side because the ceiling is higher. Now I mentioned I like Godwin in this game, taking it up to 100. He's the highest ranked of the wide receivers on this team. The matchup's great in terms of uh, the cornerback he's going up against uh, in the slot, but the running back. Let's circle back there because if Ronald Jones, what you said just now about the defense in Atlanta, about your concerns about, are, are you benching Ronald Jones even if he's active? He he's someone I am absolutely willing to, but he's not a must bench. He's been solid through the course of the season. If they deem he's ready to go and he's the starter, he should have enough volume to be, you know, we're talking about playing a, a DeAndre Washington in a bad matchup because of volume. The volume would, would be there for Ronald Jones, but he is, you know, a lot of times you're in the playoffs. You've got three or four decent running backs, and if you're looking for pivot options, like Melvin Gordon, we were talking, he's he's a starter blaster. I would, without a doubt, start Melvin Gordon really? over Ronald Jones this week. Clyde Edwards Alaire against the Saints. Oh yeah, with uh, I, I would start Clyde Edwards Alaire. Okay. I feel like I don't want to make calls with Ronald Jones today. Sure, I feel like that. That's the scariest thing to do. Is I, the COVID list thing was a surprise, and then the finger. Yeah, I mean, all of my analysis here of who I would play is obviously assuming that Ronald Jones is starting. So he, the COVID list is irrelevant to that conversation. Um, he still has the finger and the matchup. Uh, issues. Obviously, the decision is made easier if he is not active for the game on the COVID well, list. I would definitely that, not play him. That brings up a, a another difficult situation. Leonard Fournette, healthy scratch last week. Bruce Arians did say if Ronald Jones can't go, Leonard Fournette's going to be the starter for this team. Are you going to are you are you willing to dust Leonard Fournette off the uh, the bench <laughs> and then and put him in the starting lineup? No. Leonard Fournette? Oh. No way. Oof. No way am I playing Leonard right. Fournette. I mean, okay. I, that's not to say he can't fall into an end zone, but if you're telling me that uh, at the end of this game, LaShawn McCoy clearly was got the, the most volume, I'd believe it. If you said that this was, the, this was the game that they decided not. to start working in the rookie, I'd be like, uh, okay, I don't trust I think I would Leonard play, Fournette. I think I would play him, Mike. You would play Leonard Fournette? Sure. Wow. Adrian Peterson gave us two weeks with two touchdowns a week in the absence of DeAndre Swift. The Peterson. Hall of Famer, who's been awesome forever. Leonard it, Fournette was the... He the, was like the number four overall pick, Jason. There's a chance Leonard Fournette's a three-down back. There is a chance. Because he's the nickel guy. He's the ca he's the pass catcher, or has been. He's back. Well, I will say this. If you I'd look, play him over Todd Gurley. I, I'll say this. Yes. I would play your yes. grandmother over Todd Gurley. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. Uh, R.I.P. Um, yeah, because Todd Gurley could have a negative game, and that could actually work out. You could win a bet. It's possible that you could win a bet saying you'd play my grandmother over Todd Gurley, and not even fiction. <laughs> I think that the range of outcomes for Todd Gurley includes oh. a negative finish. He's been so bad. He has been bad, but the Falcons' defense against running backs, just to illustrate it, has not been bad. Uh, this last week was the first week since week six that they gave up any kind of good performance. That was Austin Eckler's umpteen targets and catches uh he's he, a fake running back yeah he was he was okay but 
New Orleans the week before, great running team, great running backs. They they, they didn't get it done. Uh, the the Raiders the week before, uh, obviously they predicate on the run and, and and Josh Jacobs. New Orleans the week before that it, again since so week six. So uh, maybe it's just because they're so easy to throw on. But I don't like the matchup. It at feels all. like both teams could indeed abandon the run in this one. You could see a ton of pass attempts. Calvin Ridley will face Carlton Davis. I don't care. Doesn't matter. He when he gets targeted eight plus times, he gives you a monster fantasy week. That's just what he does. Uh, Julio Jones, if you if he's active, you generally just play yes. Julio Jones. If if he is active, I will play Julio Jones in my in my playoffs. If he is out, I mean, you're uh, if if Julio's <clears throat> excuse me, if Julio's out, I'm out on everybody. Yeah, well, other than Ridley, Ridley, mm -hmm. and then you're you're out on Hurst, out on Russell Gage, out on Matt Ryan. We're always out on Todd Gurley. Kind of sounded like Mike was tearing up at the end of that. <laughs> it, it did. I know well, you're just I mean, losing I, your voice. I do have Calvin Ridley. I wouldn't play anybody. Oh, those were happy tears. <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, Rob Gronkowski, yes, absolutely. Hayden Hurst, no, never, not going to do it. The 49ers, 5-8. and eight. Dallas Cowboys, 4-9. and nine. 49ers are three-point road favorites. It's a 45-point over-under. I guess I'm a little bit surprised that they are favored. So Really? You know what? Oh. I think. Mm. I think this is going to be it. Okay. Andy's almost upset of the week. You know, this just reminds me of the Aikman and Steve Young games, oh, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, legendary. Yeah, Mullins v. Dalton. That's good. Yeah, this should be a, a great matchup. Um, San Francisco, they want to run the football. We don't know if Mostert will be available. Could be some Jeff Wilson, Tevin Coleman, Jarek McKinnon combination. It's Jeff Wilson time. And then uh, Ezekiel Elliott, just so you are aware, since week six, he's been the RB27. Mm. How are you evaluating him into the future? I believe that, you know, the when Dak comes back, everything will rise. The, the I don't necessarily think that that means he's guaranteed to go back to being a top three locked and loaded guy. We just talked about who our top pick would be next year. I think we got through five guys, and Zeke's name wasn't in there. But he will be a first-rounder for me next year. You have a, a double whammy here of obviously you've lost the quarterback, which is the most important, but you've also lost a lot of the offensive line that made Zeke so special. If next year the offensive line is healthy and Dak is back, uh, the the volume in the offense dictates that he'll be a great option. But for now, this year, James Robinson is looking at Zeke, going, "I didn't need, I didn't need Dak." That's yeah. true. Yeah, it, I think the the difference for Zeke, looking at the future, when Dak is back, you know, presuming they figure out how to sign him, they because they bungled that last year, then Zeke is a good play. But you just I think look, he's going to fall out look of the, at the, uh, the that's fine if the he top falls five, out five six picks. If he falls out the tier of the elite, that's I I don't blame you because the fact that he can't get it done in this circumstance, you have to uh, adjust your evaluation of how good he is. Yeah, uh, well said. Brandon Ayuk, I know we're going to talk about him a little bit later. He's a great play at wide receiver for the 49ers. Amari you... Cooper. <laughs> Hand with the yep. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Amari Cooper has been uh, fantastic with Dalton. Not as good as he would have been with Dak, but he's the clear one for the team. He's in. Talked about George Kittle at the top of the show, designated for return. If he's active, you play him. That is this correct. This is the tight end position, yep. and George Kittle is elite. And I don't think that they're willing to take a chance with the long-term health of George Kittle. So if he's back out there, he's ready to go. There's nothing on the line in this game. Um, other than, you know, the pride of uh, a man named George Kittle. Mm -hmm. So, Dalton Schultz, nope. Yeah, I mean, floor play. What, 49ers are yeah, number two I, I, over the last six weeks, number yeah, one on the season. I have I have Schultz in our league of record. I'm right now actively trying to figure out who else I'm going to play over him. The nice thing I, I believe for Schultz is it won't be a zero. You'll get, sure. you'll get three or four receptions for 30 yards. So. Yeah, I lost to Dalton Schultz last week. That's right. That's that feels, right. Feels real good. The Detroit Lions five and eight taking on the nine and four Tennessee Titans. We don't have a game line right now because we do not know if Matthew Stafford is going to play. 
I'm in a pickle because I have Marvin Jones in a league. We just got an update that Mike Williams is not expected to play tonight and that the uh, Chargers are very concerned that Keenan Allen will not be available. And if he is, he will be limited. Uh, mm. this, that is bad. This is, for Clan, the absolute worst case scenario. At on this a, point, Mike a, is now rooting for Keenan Allen to be out. I have to be willing to uh, – yeah, I am. I'm rooting Keenan Allen, please get healthy because he – what he, fellas, what do I do with your, with my superstar wide receiver who is – because – oh, my gosh. I am now – Mike I've, is I've live this tilting. Room. I have yeah. left this tilting. room because th – because Could have just lost to me. You wouldn't we, have to worry about this. We have We have seen this play out absolutely both ways. We've seen the superstar. You're like, I'm going to play my guy. They're active. They don't even get on the field. We have seen a superstar on a short week be limited. Uh, you know, they, they probably won't be on the field very much. They go out. They have a fantastic game. I. So am, what's going to happen left. though tonight, though? <laughs> if Keenan Allen oh, is. Oh, Mike is really live tilting if, on the show. This if, sucks, man. If Keenan Allen is active. Uh, and the expectation is that he will be limited. I am playing Keenan Allen. That would be my personal advice. I believe that he is he is too good of a wide receiver, and that when he's on the field, Herbert will be looking for his direction. They, I think, they might pull him off for more run plays. Pull him off for, you know, if if he's limited in some fashion, when he's on the field, he will be utilized. And and he's also. A gamer. Yeah. He plays. He's played through a lot of these injuries. So that would be what my personal decision would be. Andy, what would you do if you had Keenan Allen? Not knowing the pivot option, just in general, would you... At this point, with the news that we have at this moment in time, I don't think I'm playing Keenan Allen. If he's active. If he's active. I don't... <laughs> I, I can't take a chance at him coming off after one play. And that seems like it's a real likely scenario. Yeah, it's possible. Because he came off last week, and he's very doubtful today, and he's got 10 days, and they're playing for nothing. I just don't know. if I, I just don't think the upside is there, which is – but you asked. It's an opinion. It's a, it's a read situation. If I have Keenan Allen, now knowing that Mike Williams is out, I am picking up Tyron Johnson. If he's a he's a viable pivot if both of those players are gone. And the whole reason this came up, this is somehow being brought up in the middle of the Detroit Lions and Titans breakdown. <laughs> and the reason why is because before the show, I was talking about Tyron Johnson. And you don't know if Stafford's playing, and Marvin Jones is another option. And if Marvin Jones doesn't have Matthew Stafford, I want no part of him. Mm -hmm. I want no part of Marvin Jones. He has the ability to not perform with Matthew Stafford like he did last week. But you don't know if you have Stafford. So then do you put Tyron Johnson out there? That's a decision I have in a dynasty semifinal league. So very tough. I don't think Stafford's going to play this week. That's my read on the situation. I agree. So in that case, I'm going to play. If Keenan's out, I'm playing Tyron Johnson tonight over Marvin Jones. So uh, that's, that's where I'm at. And you might be in a similar boat. That being said, look, Ryan Tannehill, it looked like he had a smash matchup last week against Jacksonville. Technically, he did. He did not deliver for fantasy whatsoever. I worry about the exact same thing coming true this week. I thought about him multiple times this week. Thought about him in the streaming quarterbacks. Thought about him in the start of the week. Everything on paper says, okay, A.J. Brown, big game, big game, let's go. You could have 200 yards from Derrick Henry again. You could have this game put away against a backup quarterback who makes mistakes. Where are you guys at? I'm, I'm still willing to stream... Brian Tannehill, uh, I mean, quarterback 19 on the week, that sounds terrible, but 200 yards, two touchdowns, so he didn't he didn't sink your team. And you combine that with Derrick Henry had two touchdowns of his own. I mean, there was, the Titans scored a lot. The variance just went to Derrick Henry, and uh, probability certainly says right now in this matchup against the Lions, uh, Derrick Henry has completed his transformation into a Yeti, yeah, that the probability is on his side, but Tannehill could still be the one who comes away with the touchdowns. I am not laughing at you, Mike. I am laughing at the comment in our show doc under Derrick Henry, where you know traditionally we put some statistics, we right. put some analytics yeah. that we've yeah. broken down. This just says let the bodies hit the floor. 
Yeah, he's going to stiff arm these people to oblivion. Uh, I'm going to play Derrick Henry. Derrick Henry <laughs> this week. I think the matchup Bold is choice. is okay. Um and so I'm going to I'm going to put him in. Uh here's the here's the reality with what you're talking about Andy in the Derrick Henry versus Ryan Tannehill battle on the same team. Um one of the concerns is there's now being so much publicity surrounding the fact that Derrick Henry is actually in play for the all-time rushing record in the history of sure. the NFL. If he basically gets 200 yards a game for these next three games, which is very doable based on the matchups and based on how many times he's done that already this season, then he would he would get it. And the, everybody, they're still human beings, and he wants to get it. And if they're able to, uh, I, I do have a little bit of fears of that. But like Mike said, Tannehill last week, he didn't have a bad game. He didn't, he didn't destroy you by he, any means he, he just didn't he ceiling. certainly didn't ceiling he didn't have a great game he didn't win the week for you like you would hope and uh but he has that potential I do think his floor is still fine yeah I agree with all of what you're saying if you need um if you need a ceiling I'd like I play Brady over over Tannehill yes, for sure. I would as well yeah uh AJ Brown yep you're gonna play him he was limited as uh, practice that's normal so all don't, don't freak out one of the things that's been interesting about my son learning to play fantasy football is that he sees the injury designations for the first time during the week, and he comes in panicked all the time. Like, he sees uh, a questionable tag show up for A.J. Brown in this situation. And, hey, what happened to him? What happened to him? You know, he's going to be okay. He played football. <laughs> That's yes. it's, it's a rough sport. Kenny Galladay did not practice again. He's not going to play. This has been bewildering, but I think I have it figured out what's happening. Maybe. Okay. I think he's stringing them along. Yeah. Because he's a free agent. Yeah. Oh. And I think that maybe it's always been like, yeah, I'm feeling good. No, I'm re -aggravated. Like, clearly, they could have put him on an IR. Like, long ago. He's going to miss six straight weeks if he misses this week. So, I think that's what it might be. It might be a little bit of uh, free agent management. Yeah. If you're Kenny Galladay, at this point, you have a lot of reasons to you not get on the field. You have nothing to gain. By getting on the field, he's he's already proven that he is he's a number one yes. elite wide receiver. It's already proven. Your team's out of the playoffs. Only bad things can happen. Shut it down. Yeah, yeah. Maybe you don't get see. that money. Yeah, get get your papers, Kenny. Yep, yeah, I I agree. And if it's Chase Daniel, confidence levels are going to go way down. You know, T.J. Hawkinson, you've been playing him. You're going to keep playing him. Generally, tight ends are, are short yardage friends of backup quarterbacks, and T.J. Hawkinson will be that. Corey Davis, you can play him. The variance is going to be, it's going to be there. I mean, that's the yeah, situation. I would still play him uh, as, a, as a fringe to flex type of a player. I, I agree. Everything we talked about, Tannehill will be split up mostly between AJ Brown and Corey Davis. I I think Corey Davis is a fine play, and obviously uh, DeAndre Swift is someone that I am I am starting this week. I with or without Stafford, but obviously I'm limiting my expectations if Stafford is not there. The Texans are four and nine. They're taking on the nine and four Indianapolis Colts. Oh, palindrome game! <laughs> Colts are seven point favorites. It's a fifty one and a half point over under. Uh, believe it or not, this would be. I'm walking on air. <laughs> Sorry, that's <laughs> all I could hear. Uh, this is this is one of those games that jumps out to me. Years of of divisional matchups. And uh, looking at these game lines where I, this is on that almost upset category to me. Um, the Colts are heavy favorites. It's 51 point over under, but but Deshaun Watson finds a way. Um, should get Brandon Cooks back in this game. And I think it might be a little closer than these seven points. So we'll see, though. that It might be impossible for Watson to do that because the Houston rushing defense probably won't be able to stop Jonathan Taylor. Yeah, the, are they... Uh, Deshaun Watson against the Colts just a couple weeks ago. He had 340 yards, but he had no touchdowns. No passing, one rushing. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I'm sorry. No passing. Yeah. I, I was looking at him, looking at this game. The 341 was great against this Colts defense. Colts defense has actually been uh, beatable. Beatable lately. It's not the first uh, part of the year. The last six weeks, 20th against quarterbacks, 26th against running backs, 25th against tight ends. Still good against wideouts. But uh, I'm interested in Deshaun Watson in this game. We're going to talk about him.
Oh my! I know. Now, wow. Yeah, I, uh, I, I, I actually, right. I love go. that. I love that personally, and part of the reason for that is is Kiki Colts. Um, because oh, no. <laughs> if we got T Y Houston, now we got Kiki Colts. <laughs> Kiki Colts <laughs> oh has gosh. three one hundred yard games in his career, and they are all. Are you serious? Against the Colts and their zone defense. Really? Yes. So, Kiki, so Kiki, would you go Kiki Colts over? Tyron Johnson out of asking for a friend? I would because we've seen more of Kiki, his involvement, and I still trust Deshaun Watson more than Herbert, not necessarily from solely a fantasy perspective, but just getting the job done. Uh, what's the chance that Deshaun Watson has a collapse game and right. gets figured out? It's just not going to happen. It actually shocks me that Kiki QT has three 100-yard games in his career. And then when you tell me that there are three against the Colts, very interesting. Mm. Now you've got me thinking. Mm -hmm. um, other storylines from this game, David Johnson coming off the COVID list. I'd rather not, but... Yeah, um, no. I think he's an okay play. But who, who did you bring up earlier? Um, well, we were talking about potential starts across from Melvin Gordon. What? I'm trying to remember the running back we brought up earlier that would have been in this category. Like David Johnson... Clyde? No, Fournette. Oh, oh goodness, yeah. that's not even remotely close. It's David Johnson. I would play David Johnson. Uh, David Johnson, just just some context, because I know he's missed games. He's been, you know, uninspiring for sure. Um, he has three games on the season where he's not a top twenty-four running back. He he's actually been just yeah. fine. Yeah. Um, and the this matchup against the Colts, like we like we said, the last six weeks, they're just they're they have not been the same as they were to start the season. And I, I think David Johnson will be utilized and always has a chance of a touchdown. So I'm I'm fine. Play. I think I put him right next to Melvin Gordon. Like, that's the type of player you're getting. Someone that should be a top 24 back probably won't be a top 12 back. These two teams played two weeks ago. Colts won by six. Watson fumbled when they had a chance to take the lead at the end of the game. This, this game's going to be more competitive than people think. T.Y. Houston, yep. Yeah. Play him. Um. He might be Mike's permanent start of the week right right now. <laughs> I'm sure the Texans figured him out by now. I have seen a lot of questions about Michael. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen Michael Pittman questions. Uh, um, last three weeks, he's been outside the top 58 at the position. Uh, no, I'd play QT over Michael Pittman. We, we joke around the office because a Andy saw it from – even weeks prior to the two-game breakout that we saw from Pittman. Pittman has one route. He won, he as far as when he catches the ball, maybe right. he runs uh, phantom routes. It's hard to call it a route, even. Yeah, it's, it's a crosser. He just runs across the field and gets hit in perfect stride. Yep, that's a good job, Philip Rivers. And then sometimes he's able to take that to the house. Yeah, he did that in two back-to-back -back games. He could do that's it here. It. That's his whole route tree. He could do it here, but yeah. that's the way it comes. Is is will he break a crossing route across the field to the end zone? Yeah, yeah, that's that's it. Odds are. Lower than 50%. Right. Um, he's a more upside play because of his athleticism than other wide receivers, like a Hunter Renfro, for example. But he has a real low floor. Trey Burton and Moali Cox might not play in this game. Oh, baby hands. So baby hands Jack Doyle could be a sneaky last-second start for um, – Somebody. I mean, Mike, if you've got Dalton Schultz, the the problem wow. is in order to have that confidence, you need Burton and Mo Ali Cox to be out. That but, is correct. But if I knew they were out now, Jason, you you follow the weather probably closer than both of us. Out of curiosity, how sunny do you think it will be? I'm asking on behalf of Jordan Akins. Well, um, uh, fortunately for him, it's a dome game, so it shouldn't be sunny. Shiny underside of that dome, or are we good? We are. We are completely do they have, good. Do they have spotlight capability? <laughs> yes, if if you are um, maybe a a Colts fan, just bring a flashlight, and you can stop Aikens from doing anything you want. Oh, gosh, that was painful. Just shine it in his <laughs> eyes. That was painful. All right, let's move on to our starts. Starts of the week. Let me speak on behalf of all of us, starts of the week wise, and um, for those saying, why didn't you talk about Jonathan Taylor? Yeah, you start Jonathan Taylor. In that game, mm -hmm. I, I my would, start yeah. of the week, yeah. Jonathan Taylor, yeah. all of our and everyone's start of the week. Yep. All right, let's kick it off. Starts of the week for week fifteen, 
And um, Jason, why don't you why don't you start? Sure, I'm going to go back to the aforementioned Tom Brady. Uh, I I I am absolutely fine playing him in my playoffs. He has lit up the playoffs before. There's no run game here, I believe, for Atlanta, and they're against a great running team. Godwin has the week removed from getting the screw out of his finger. Evans is a week removed from the injury that almost made him miss last week. Another week for Antonio Brown, and the Falcons' secondary sucks. I just hope that the Falcons can keep up to make him throw enough, but I think he's got a safe floor, and we've seen the potential of a top-five week uh, several times from Brady this season. I think they'll have to throw a lot, so I, I like Tom Brady this week. I'm going with Jalen Hurts, the rookie quarterback for the Philadelphia mm -hmm. Eagles. He is taking on the Arizona Cardinals. We saw 100 rushing yards from him last week against the Saints. Russell Wilson's biggest rushing day or rushing game this week came against goodness. His biggest rushing game this year came against Arizona because Arizona plays a lot of man coverage. If you've played any sort of flag football, you know you cannot run man because the quarterback is just going to run all over you, and that's what Jalen Hurts is going to do. And on on top of that, their secondary is just not scary if Hurts wants to pass the ball. Yeah, I mean, I think if Daniel Jones was healthy and could run, it would have been a different story last week against 100%. Arizona. Uh, I'm going to go with Deshaun Watson. And the reason why he's my start of the week is because of Mike's reaction when I said I'd talk about him later, which is yeah. a little bit of surprise, a little bit of worry. The Colts defense has an intimidation factor that's been established in fantasy. Look, Watson finds a way. It's a 51 point over under. He is not somebody to pivot off of this week. You're not pivoting off of Deshaun Watson for Jalen Hurts. No, I, I absolutely love this call, Andy. I'm I'm a little sad with myself that I didn't uh, make him mine. I, I really like Deshaun Watson this week, and it's scary against the Indianapolis Colts. Yeah, and, and here's here's one of the headlines. The Colts have actually been the seventh best matchup for fantasy quarterbacks over the last five weeks. Mm. Uh, they get back Brandon Cooks, QT, and David Johnson comes back, and it's a division game, and there's a pride pride element. You know, you say, hey, Houston's not playing for anything. You know what division games are like. You're playing for something. And uh, if anything, disrupt the Colts. Uh, screw them up out of and take them out of a playoff spot. So I'm going to go with Deshaun Watson. All right. I am going at running back with a rookie, as we all are, mm -hmm. I just realized. J.K. Dobbins. Really? Oh, wow. Against Jacksonville. Last week, he was up to 62% snap count. And most importantly, he was up to 62% of the running back attempts. That is not a three-headed timeshare situation. Mark Ingram got one touch. It didn't even register because it was a flea flicker. Jacksonville's given up big games in three consecutive weeks against three star backs. Top five performances against Cleveland, Minnesota, Tennessee. They drafted J.K. Dobbins to be special. He's looked great on the field. They're giving him the opportunity. The matchup is there. I will be starting J.K. Dobbins this week. And All I'm, right, Mike. I'm going with the Rams' Cam Akers. I'm taking the rookie running back. 22 opportunities right into 32 opportunities. The rookie has taken over. The matchup is incredible against the New York Jets. And you're like, well, of course I'm playing Cam Akers. But I'm saying he's my start of the week, as in I'm playing him over Andy's start of the week. I'm playing this guy. I'm playing Akers over Montgomery, Josh Jacobs, Kenyon Drake, Chris Carson. Huge names in fantasy football. I am playing Cam Akers over these guys as the rookie has taken over the job for the Rams. All right, and mine is James Robinson. I've heard the fears. People are afraid of all of his matchups to end the year, not just this week. But Baltimore, they've actually been atrocious against the running back position the yes. last five weeks. They shut somebody down. His name was Benny Snell. <laughs> I mean, that, that is not impressive. Eight straight weeks inside the top 24 for James Robinson. He is a matchup-proof must-start Gardner may get them closer to the goal line than previous quarterbacks have done. Oh, he w may. He will. Gardner yeah. is better than the other guys they've been trotting out there. Yeah, but he could actually throw touchdowns too. Uh, so it's probably, yeah. it's probably neutral there. Well, but. maybe he throws them to James Robinson. I think you need to put him in your lineup. And I've seen so many questions. Like Part sure. of this decision-making today is what questions are coming quickly. Uh, James Robinson is a player you just – you don't pivot off of. You don't have the luxury to to bench James Robinson right now, unless your team has Derrick Henry, Dalvin Cook, and Austin Eckler. And it's, okay, I'll allow it. Um, and also, congrats on your championship. Right. Uh, wide receiver. Oh, he's going in. 
Ayukin. Oh. Brandon Ayuk against Dallas. The targets are as assured as it gets. He is the passing offense. I don't expect Kittle uh, to be there this week, but even if he is, he, he's just a, a major part of the game plan, especially with Debo gone. He's been in the top 20 at wide receiver, five straight games played, and a wide receiver one in three of those five. The matchup is, uh, is Dallas. I mean, that's all I need to say. And my favorite part is he's not Debo Samuel. Can I throw a little uh, hot stat for uh, your way? I'll allow it. About Brandon Ayuk? Yeah. He's 267 receiving yards away from breaking the franchise record by Jerry Rice. Oh, the, rookie, for, for a rookie, rookie. A rookie record, yeah. Wow. Uh, the rookie record is 927 receiving yards. 1985. Impressive. So, And, and he he's rooting for him. Jerry Rice wants him to break it. So. All right, my yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Sure, go weak. get it. Go That's get a it. real nice thing to say. My wide true. receiver start of the week, Houston has a problem, and it is T.Y. Hilton or T.Y. Houston as he has now been named on this show. We're talking NBA Jam rules say that T.Y. Hilton is on fire, 80 yards and a score in three straight games, plus all of the history of him just destroying the souls of the Houston Texans. Um, I saw uh, uh, Field Yates referencing something that he had heard from Frank Reich saying that they start all their game planning saying, how are we going to get the ball to T.Y. Hilton and how are we going to get the ball to Naeem Hines? And it's it's a it's a new quarterback with Phil Rivers. Maybe it just took longer than they wanted. Uh, they've been winning along the way, and now they are hitting on all cylinders. Phillip Rivers, the connection with T.Y. Hilton. So you are playing him and enjoy. All right. It's my turn, right? Yeah. All right. Curtis Samuel. I'm going to bring Curtis Samuel to the table this week. The Packers are actually giving up quite a few fantasy points to the wide receiver position now, the ninth best matchup over the last five weeks. He is squaring up with Chandon Sullivan, who is outside the top 100 in terms of cornerback grades, who's actually banged up after last week. And I mentioned Jair Alexander will be outside with Robbie Anderson. Don't know how healthy DJ Moore is. And Curtis Samuel has given you some not good, but great fantasy weeks. I think one comes this week for a team in need of a playmaker um, in a game where they're going to be down and throwing the ball a lot. Um, so I, I'm going to go with Curtis Samuel here. Yeah, uh, I like it at uh, tight end. I'm going with Jared Cook. Cook? Cook. Jared Cook has two back-to-back -back good games with Taysom Hill. And most importantly, the Kansas City matchup is fantastic. Kansas City's not great against tight ends. And they can keep up. They can make Taysom Hill throw the ball. The problem with Jared Cook has been what – Cook? What, <laughs> you got to do the kicking by the Burke. Um The problem has been Taysom <laughs> Hill, They what they want to do is they want to have him complete seven of ten passes and call it a game. Look. They're, they're not going to be able to do that against Kansas City. <clears throat> Kansas City will be able to score on the Saints, and if they're going to throw the ball, Taysom Hill's – best target against this defense outside of Michael Thomas is Jared Cook. He'll get targets. He's always a threat in the end zone. So uh, I, I I will be starting Jared Cook. What I like about our tight end starts of the week, these are, if you, I think, good options if you are not locked and loaded at the right. top of the tight end. So that's that's who we're talking about here. We're not starting these guys over uh, TJ Hawkinson. But, or or Tunyon or right. Waller or Kelsey or these are, Andrews. These are streaming options for the fantasy playoffs. I'm and the guy I want to highlight, Cole Komet from the Chicago Bears. He has taken the starting job. Yeah, that happened about four weeks ago when the snaps transformed into the low 30s, all the way up to the 70 percentile. He's running more routes than Jimmy Grandpa. And now the last two weeks, we've seen those snaps turn into opportunities. He's seen seven targets two weeks in a row. That's that's a 21 percent target share. Uh, he's taking on the Minnesota Vikings. It's an average matchup, but. Guy like tight ends don't get seven targets, and Cole Komet is he's finally emerging. He's a blo he's blossoming. He was a second round pick, so it's not a, a shock that it took him this long to get integrated to the offense. But I think that's where I, I think we are there. Cole blossoming Komet? into a, a fine young man. Yes, <laughs> you think he can uh, can make it happen this week? I do. Okay, uh, I'm gonna go Tyler. <laughs> J I liked it. Jason approved. Uh, Tyler Higby. Believe it or not, is my tight end start of the week. I don't believe it. And um, I'm gonna wait. give it a seven. The the can the make it happen. Can make it happen. Yeah. All right, uh, Tyler Higby. 
of the Rams. This All is right. this is a deeper league upside play. Mike set the table with how we're looking at tight ends. If you're not locked and loaded, look Tyler Higby's way. Um, the Jets are on a hot streak of sorts. <laughs> yeah, they are. Uh, namely, four straight weeks giving up top 10 performances to fantasy tight ends. Higby is back above the 85% snap count over the last two weeks. Um, could be interesting as a touchdown option. Had a top 12 finish two weeks ago. And the Robert Woods not practicing, sure. banged up thigh, just a little lysing on the Higby cake. My fantasy points allowed above opponents average says that the Jets are the best. <laughs> and by that, I mean the worst. Yeah, for fantasy tight ends? Yes. So Higby could be an interesting, deeper play. Mike, sure. I feel like with your Dalton Schultz situation, you're probably um, – you know, paying close attention to your own words here, I looking am. and and ours as we look at these tight end um, pivot options. So, one more very important segment. Jason Moore's Ironclad, Locked and Loaded, one hundred percent guaranteed boom boom kicker of the week. Listen, I'm a big guy. Every day's fat day. But in these playoffs, you can win with the Rams Matt Gay. <laughs> you rhymed both words. I mean, Jason. that's 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 uh, poetic majesty. Sensational. Thank you. Fat day with Matt Gay. That's right. <laughs> um look, I uh, some self-deprecating <laughs> humor is always always kick, gets me. Kick that football. Yeah. All right. Pristine Auction. We want to thank them for sponsoring the show. Brandon Ayuk. Ayuk it. Signed jersey yesterday, $80.66. PristineAuction.com. Use the code BALLERS. Get a $10 credit. Mike, I, I look forward to your live tilt the remainder of this day with Keenan Allen. And uh, we'll do more matchups on tomorrow's show. We'll see you then. Enjoy the game. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.